Hello everyone, Brett Tadlock here, TN Artist, welcome to my channel. So we're going to start this painting out the Sentinel. You start with a tinted background and then loosely sketch in your composition. Then from there, add in what's going to be your darkest darks and your mid-tones and your lights so you can get kind of a feel for the composition overall for what's going to go where. Now this is going to be kind of a bright day scene so once I get that sketched in from there it's just a matter of start laying in the lighter lights of kind of a really light blue for the sky and then just a slightly darker uh, bluish gray tone for the clouds and laying in some browns kind of a burnt sienna uh, burnt umber for the rocks and the main there and sketch in some of the highlights again for the clouds staying very loose keeping it zoomed out so not getting focused on the details at the moment but kind of again playing around with the composition and refining it more and more and laying in the colors which are in this are very limited uh, there's really just kind of a white uh, blue like ultramarine some purple made from that along with the uh, burnt sienna burnt umber type, type brown for it as well and then white and just kind of playing around again here and there with the composition and the colors staying very loose and free uh, and starting to, to really define where the light is coming in from which is kind of a overhead if you're looking at this it'd be about uh, one o'clock on, on a position for where the sun would be at for coming down and getting that feel. So for these reflections in the bottom, it's really, you want to keep some of those vertical strokes. It gives that feeling of the reflection being down and then we'll break up the edges a little bit as well. So, and then just again, pushing some of the darks to get darker and going for the reflected light, which is kind of a purplish, uh, bluish color, uh, actually chosen from the mountain right behind it and then lightened up quite a bit. And then from there, adding in more ripples to the water to show where the reflections are and some of the waves and so forth. And just again, breaking up the back mountains as well. I realized they were too uniform. So I wanted to go in and kind of break that up and then start adding in some of the darker refinements. So this is where I start really trying to hone in on details like breaking surf in the background, light coming through the waves, um, refining the edges of the rocks, some of the surf and the foam coming in from it. Again, working on some of the background uh, details in the rocks. But for this right here, for this highlights in these darks, what I've uh, taken to doing in Procreate is on a separate layer. So all of this has basically been painted on one layer so far. And on a separate layer, I'll use a scatter brush and just random marks and then throw it into just kind of a odd pattern, then move it over and transform it with the warp tool to fit the rock so that it really kind of gives that um, look that I'm going for. And you can see what that's what I'm doing right here with the darks is so then bringing it over and getting it laid out. And then I'll erase it and smudge it back to fit in with the rock shape and the shadow and, the, and letting it fall back and then merge it down back into one layer again and then go back and retouch it and keep doing the same for all of these rocks to get that texture and that feel for the breaking of the lights and the darks in the background to give it that um, that feeling of rough rock and beat up rock. Uh, the whole point of this is to kind of have a, a rock that's standing there just kind of the sentinel for the, the bay that stands watch over the centuries and sees all the comings and goings. And then reflected in below and again trying to highlight some of the foam and try to uh, add some shadows to it and again punching up the light for the uh, highlights and the darks and just pushing and playing that. So that's really what it comes down to for this point is trying to play around with you know, where the shadows are cast and refining some of the spots on there to take and add um, some of the looseness, uh, you know, add some tightness to that so that it starts pulling it in and giving defined edges and other edges that just kind of blur out and that push and pull. Um, but again, trying to keep a very loose and impressionistic style overall, but at the same time pulling some stuff more into focus so it doesn't just look like a blurry painting and using again traditional techniques to just kind of do all this so so the, again this is a very quick over the shoulder uh, view of what i do and how i do it and my process if you have questions about it or anything leave comments below leave suggestions below join my facebook group i try to post in there uh, these lessons here but really just kind of as conversation starters for things to try and so forth so but i hope you've enjoyed it all i hope you uh, like this video and you like some of the other stuff if you want to support the video you can always jump over to redbubble or my etsy shop and support there 
and you can use this you know i'm using procreate here but my other two favorites are rebel 4 and art rage so feel free to use those too and let me know what questions you have with those so i appreciate it and again make sure to like subscribe and ring the bell notification and leave any comments or questions below and i'll get to them as soon as i can